Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Greater St. Mark, Church of God in Christ, live on Facebook, Amen. as well as on Instagram on this blessed Resurrection Day, Resurrection Sunday. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Ronald Roth, along with my lovely wife, Lady Paula Roth. We're here to share with you a tremendous word from the Lord. What a tremendous time to be in the body of Christ. What a blessed time to be saved, to have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. And I'm so excited today just to have you to be with us. I want to thank you for taking time to share with us on this tremendous day, the highest holy day on the Christian calendar, Resurrection Sunday. Before I go into the word of the Lord on today, I want to share a few things with you as well as allow Lady Roth to share some things with you on her heart. First of all, feel free to share your stewardship, your tithe, and your offerings to Gillify uh, to Greater St. Mark. That's G-I-L-E-F-I-Y, Gillify. There you will find Greater St. Mark, Greater S-T Mark, Church of God in Christ. Also, you can mail in your donations, your contributions to Greater St. Mark, P.O. Box 19, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. I want to give you uh, some advance notice on this coming Wednesday. We'll also be on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. And there we'll be sharing into another season in the church. And I'll talk more about that at the end of today's message. And then one week from today again on Sunday at 11 a.m. We'll be sharing again on Facebook Live as well as on Instagram. So feel free to join us at your leisure. At this time, I'm going to allow Lady Roth to just share with you what's on her heart. And then I'll come back momentarily. Say amen for her. And by all means, type in your amen, your hallelujah, your thank you, Jesus. Respond back to us so we, we'll know that you're there. Amen for later on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We are here to celebrate Jesus' resurrection and thanking God for the blood. We thank God for Calvary. We thank God for his death and burial and his resurrection. And we do give God all the glory and all the praise. As this song comes to my mind, and I, would, and I would like to just read it to you, it says, because he lives, and the song says, God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. Yes. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. I trust and believe in God. I thank God and I trust God and I take him at his word. I put my trust in God. There's no time for doubting because I know too much about him. God has been so good to each and every one of us and we're here to celebrate celebrate that he got up he lived he died and he got up just for us yes he got up for us and i thank god and i thank god and i thank god that he got up with all power in his hands and we're going to thank and praise god and we're going to always remember it was the blood of jesus amen thank you later off for those powerful words i want to go readily into the word of the lord but also at the conclusion of the message I want to allow time for what we typically call the call to discipleship. So I pray that you will stay with us and hear the conclusion of the whole matter uh, to allow those to give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ as well as rededicate themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. And also I plan on having prayer at the end of the message as well to pray for you and to pray for our nation and to pray for this world. But let's now go into the word of the Lord and God thought so much of the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ, that it is recorded in all four of the gospels. You will find the resurrection story in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's how important the resurrection is to us as believers, because without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Christianity would be a dead religion. Oh, but yes, thanks be unto God that he rose his son, Jesus Christ from the dead, and he is risen. But I want to go into the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, beginning with verse 1 and reading down through verse 10. 
It says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow. And for the fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, all hell. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. All the word of God for the people of God. But again, verse 6 says, he is not here, yes. for he is risen. I want to stop right there. Oh, yes. that's a good place to shout right there. Even in the comfort of your home, wherever you may be watching, the fact that we know we don't serve a dead Savior, but he is risen. And because he got up, because he was resurrected, we can be resurrected from our cares in life, from our problems in life. Whatever is holding you down, whatever is holding you hostage, oh, Jesus defeated it on the cross at Calvary. Well, the Bible again says, he is not here for he's risen. He said, come see the place where the Lord lay. The highest holy day on the Christian calendar. Traditionally, some may know it is Easter, but a better description is Resurrection Sunday or Resurrection Day. The word Easter does not appear in the Bible as we refer to it. You'll find it in Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Now behold, that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrillions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. That Easter is not the Easter that we celebrate with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why we rather refer to it as Resurrection Sunday, yes. Resurrection Day. It's the day the church celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It marks the greatest miracle of all. Yes. It is the greatest miracle of all because God made other worlds. God can make another man. But this man, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, yes. placed in the grave for three long days and got up all oh, that is the greatest miracle of all, the yes. resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hear the word of God, my people, in John chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. And after, the, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. And they took the body of Jesus and wound him in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never yet man laid. And they laid Jesus therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Yeah. So now they put Jesus in the grave. Why? Yeah, because man. the Sabbath was not. And they did not want the body of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. hanging on the cross, hanging on the tree. They did not want to desecrate the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So they placed him in Joseph's new tomb, Joseph of Arimathea. 
and Nicodemus. Oh, you remember Nicodemus, the ruler of the synagogue, who came to Jesus by night and asked him, Master, what must I do to inherit? What must I do to be saved? Yes. And there, you know, Jesus told him that, are you not a master or ruler of the scriptures? And he began to tell him that you must be born again, not only of the water, but of the spirit. So evidently, Nicodemus received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. The Bible records in Matthew chapter 27, verses 59 through 56. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid in his own new tomb, which he had hewed out of the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure unto the third day. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error should be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, you have a watch, go your way. Make it sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, Sealing the stone and setting a watch. Oh my. What, who would put a watch over a dead man's my grave? God, God. Oh, evidently they feared the power of God also yeah. to have Roman soldiers to guard the grave of Jesus Christ. Oh, but my sisters and my brothers, the resurrection story is true. The resurrection story is alive and yet alive today. Some would have you to believe that the resurrection did not occur. Some would have you to believe that perhaps he was placed in an unknown tomb and that they went to the wrong tomb and there Jesus was not there. Well, surely Joseph, whose tomb it was, would know the right tomb to go to. So you cannot say it was an unknown tomb. Uh -huh. Some would say it was the wrong tomb. Then Mary and other Mary went to the wrong tomb. All they had to do was to ask Joseph of Arimathea, where was Jesus laid? And some would have you to believe that it was a legend that they only fabricated the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, the devil is a liar because the Bible says that Jesus appeared unto 500 brethren at one time. Yes. There were eyewitnesses to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. Some would even have you to believe that it was a spiritual resurrection. Oh, that I want you to know it was not just a spiritual resurrection because Jesus appeared unto his disciples. He told them, see my hands and see my feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see, for the spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. So it was not a spiritual resurrection. It was a physical yes. resurrection yes. of Jesus Christ. Some would have you to believe that they hallucinated. They hallucinated that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. How is it possible for several people to have the same hallucination? Yes, oh, yes. the devil is a liar Please. again. They were eyewitnesses to the body and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then some would have you to believe. Well, maybe his disciples stole his body. Mm -hmm. Oh, again, the devil is a liar. He is risen because if the disciples tried to steal the body, Surely one Roman soldier could handle 11 preachers. Oh, by then, now Judas has left and Judas has hung himself. Yeah. But the 11 surely could not handle one Roman soldier. And surely the Roman soldiers would not be afraid of 11 preachers coming to try to steal the body of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So no, they did not steal the body. And then some would say that the authorities stole the body. Why would they steal the body to add validity to the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Uh -huh. And not only that, why would the Roman soldiers risk their own life saying that they had stole the body or someone stole the body? Because they knew that if they had fallen asleep or they had allowed someone to desecrate their watch, they would be put to death. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the Bible says uh -huh. that when the angel came and rolled the stone away, yes. and those watched those soldiers, they fell back like dead yes. men. Who yes. can stand against the power God. of the God. Almighty God? God? And then some would have you to believe that it was just a resuscitation of him there on the cross. No, Jesus died on the cross when he said it is finished. 
He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Yeah. And if he had passed out on the cross, surely the spirit in the side would have wakened him. Mm -hmm. But no, he said, no man take my life. I lay it down freely that I may take it up again. Yeah. Yeah. And then some say it was just a plot. It was a reserve, it was a Passover plot. No, it was not a plot. It was the divine will of God yeah. that Jesus Christ would get up out of the grave just as he said he would. If the Jews of the Roman government ever wanted to embarrass or discredit or prove wrong the Christianity movement and the faith of God that we have, the only thing they had to do was to produce the body of Jesus Christ. But they couldn't yeah, because yeah, yeah. he is risen. Oh, yeah, that's a good place to yeah, shout hallelujah yeah, right there. Yeah. That he is risen. Yeah. The Bible says in Matthew 12 and 40, it says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, yeah. so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Oh, yeah. So we have had Palm Sunday. Last Sunday when we celebrated the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem where he was selected as our Passover lamb. And then they had the Passover celebrating God's divine deliverance from Egypt and out of the land of Goshen. And then we have had Good Friday, traditionally where Jesus is placed on the cross. Yeah. But I want you to know that how is he now in the cross and how the three days occur yeah. and how was it early? Oh, somebody shout early, early, early Sunday early, morning. Early. Well, the Jews have a term known as a ona. A ona, O-N-A-H, means that one day represents the part of another day. And the Sabbath began at sunset on Friday. So that's why he had to be taken off the cross and placed in the grave. So that became one day. And that Saturday became one day. And then early Sunday morning became another day. One part of a day represented a whole day. So now when they come to the sepulchre, when they come there, they find that the grave is empty. And all oh, it says there in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 5, it says, now upon the first day of the week, all that means he got up on Sunday morning, yes. the first day of the week, known as the Lord's Day. They came there the first day of the week, very early in the morning. Yeah. They came to the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. Yeah. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord. Oh, I want you to know that the stone was rolled away, yeah. not so that Jesus could get out, but so that we could come in. Oh, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. So yeah. we could yeah. come in. And see that the Lord had risen from the dead. And the Bible says, and they found, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as we're very much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. They said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead. Oh, that's another good place, yeah, my, my sisters my, my, and my, my brothers, to shout glory right there. Yeah. Why seek ye the living among the dead? I serve a risen Savior, yeah. and I know he lives. How yeah. do I know he lives? Because he lives in my heart. Yeah. He lives in my spirit. He lives in my soul, and I'm sure you can agree with me. Yes, he lives. Yes, we he serve lives. a living Savior. He lives today. I know he lives, yeah. and thanks be unto God. And what did Jesus do when he got up out of that grave? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all asleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The last trump, the trumpet of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And the mortal must put on immortality. And here it is right here. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall he be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yeah. All the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Yeah. But when Jesus got up out of the grave, all others had gone, others had died. Yes, the widow name. Her son had died. Yes. Oh, but when Jesus rose him from the dead, he had to die again. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jairus' daughter, she died. 
But when Jesus spoke over her, tell her to come out. Denzel, I say unto thee, arise. Yeah. She had to die again. And even at the grave of his friend Lazarus, when he said, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. I want you to know that Lazarus came forth out of death, but he had to die again. Yeah. But oh my God. When Jesus got up out of the grave, death was swallowed up. And Jesus looked back and said, O oh, death, where is thou sting? O oh, grave, where is thou victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Yes. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All oh, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3 and 19, by which also... He went and preached unto the prison, to, to the spirits in prison. So while Jesus was there in the grave, God was still working. Jesus' spirit went back into the antediluvian world. And there he preached to those spirits that were held in paradise. Remember what he told the thief while hanging on the cross? He said, this day yes. thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, but when they placed him in the grave. The devil messed up when he put him on the cross because he said, if I be lifted, yes. we'll draw all men under yes. me. The devil should have never placed him on the cross. Yes. And then he made the worst mistake. They put him in a grave. They put him in a tomb. But Jesus had said that in three days, I'll raise this body yes. up again. But while he was in the grave, he went back and preached to those spirits that were held yes. captive yes. there in paradise. Oh, yes. And the Bible says he led the captive captives and led them out of paradise. And now paradise is empty. How do we know that paradise is empty? Because Paul lets us know that I'd rather be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. So now paradise is empty. Why? Because Jesus told us in John chapter 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. But I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. That where I am, oh God, oh, and there you will be with me also. So now we have a place in God. We have a home in glory with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10, it says, Wherefore he said it, when he ascended on high, he led captive captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended in the same also, that ascended up above all heavens, that he might feel all things. The Bible reminds me in Revelation chapter 1, got to hurry on and finish this, Revelation chapter 1 verses 17 through 18. And when he saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead. Whoa. And behold, I am alive Amen. forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death in my hand. When Jesus got up out of the grave, he conquered both hell, death, and the grave. He got up with all power in his hand. And that's why we can shout with confidence. He is risen. Yes. The wise men, even when they came to see him when he was born, they brought myrrh and frankincense and gold. Well, why did they bring myrrh? They brought myrrh because God knew that they wouldn't have time to properly anoint the body of Jesus Christ. So even at his birth, they brought myrrh because Jesus was born to die. So as I hurry on and finish this, the Bible again in Matthew chapter 28. Verses 1 through 10, it gives us the resurrection story. How in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, I want you to know it was the dawning of a new day. Yeah, it was yeah, a new yeah, day yeah, for yeah. you. It was yeah. a new day for me yeah. because the Bible says, therefore, if any man be yeah. in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. So when Jesus got up with power, we got up with power. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. So now we are victorious because we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So now the fact that he conquered it, you're a conqueror too. You're victorious in your life. You're victorious in your health. 
You're victorious in your finances. You're victorious in every area of your life because you have a risen Savior and because he has the power. He says, I give power unto you to tread upon serpents and scorpions and no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Oh, you ought to shout glory on this resurrection Sunday and thank God that my king lives. Well, how do we know he lives? Listen to what the psalmist says. In Psalms 24, verses 7 through 10, it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, yes. and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Well, who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Well, who is this king of yes. glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Yes. Oh, yes. I feel like running around this yes. room right now because uh, I feel yes. like David. I could run through a troop and I could leap over a wall yes. because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And yes. glory be unto God. Oh, as we say in the song, living he loved me. And yes. dying he saved me, and buried he carried my sins far away, and rising he justified me, freed me forever, and one day he's coming back, oh glorious day. Yes. And the songwriter said, I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. Yes. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives. He lives. Yes. Christ Jesus lives today. Yes. He yes. walks yes. with me and Glory talks with God. me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Oh, yes. somebody shout glory. glory. Somebody type in hallelujah. Somebody type in he is risen. Yes. And thanks be unto God that God has risen Jesus Christ. And we celebrate the fact, whatever you're going through, I want now to offer you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that what said that, but the word is not thee, yes. even in thy mouth and thy heart, which is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yes. For with the mouth, for with the heart man believeth unto yes. confession, uh, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes. Receive Jesus Christ in your life. If you're already saved, rededicate your life yes. to Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, here I am. Use me to your glory. Yes, and I have no doubt yes, when you allow Jesus to come into your life, yes, your sir. life would never be the same. Yes. If you don't mind, now go with me in prayer as we pray for those that are sick. Pray for those that are bereaved. Pray for those that are confused and don't know what's going on and what's happening in this world. But thanks be unto God, the fact that Jesus is risen we know that God is yet in control. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you now. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this day of resurrection. We thank you, O oh God, for this time to celebrate your Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. We celebrate the fact that he is risen. Yes, now, God. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus. send your word to the hospital yes, rooms God. to heal in the name of Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, Even God. those that are at home that are sick yes, and afflicted, God. heal them, O oh God, yes, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Yes, and Lord, heal our land. Yes, God. Heal our land of sin. Yes, God. Heal our land of illness. Yes, God. Heal our land of disease and infirmities, O oh God, yes. in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Look on our leaders, Lord. Look on the body of Christ. Yes, Lord, Help us Jesus. to do your will and let your will be done, O oh God, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, thank you, and we praise thee, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes, Not everybody Lord. say amen. Amen. And amen, amen. again. God amen. bless you. Again, amen. remember to join amen. us again on next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m., while we'll go into the scriptures. And I want to share with you what happens after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ showed himself many days with many infallible proofs for over 40 days. But he had commanded his disciples to go to Jerusalem and tarry there until you be endured with power from on high. Yeah. 
Then when you go into the Old Testament, you understand what's going on in the book of Leviticus. It talks about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. It talks about the Feast of the Passover. It talks about the Feast of First Fruits. Then it talks about the Feast of Pentecost. We're about to enter into Pentecost season. Yes. I will explain to you what Pentecost is and what it means and how so important it is. What happened in that upper room with those 120 believers? They're believing and calling on Father yes. to send the promise. Yes. And I want you to know the promise is under you and your children and your children's children. Yes. And as many as the Lord God himself yes. will call. Be sure to join us on next Sunday as well at 11 a.m. Now I'm going to ask you on today to sow into this ministry, to sow into what God is doing. I'm going to ask you to give a Trinity offering on today. A Trinity offering of just $30. Trinity, why? Because the Trinity was involved in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was God the Father. It was God the Son. Yes. It was God the Holy Spirit involved in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Father, make them one for we are one. So yes. when Jesus got up out of the grave, it was the Father's will that allowed it to be so. It was the Holy Spirit that quickened his spirit and brought him back to life. Yes. And it was Jesus who rose from the dead. So yes, a trinity of $30. If you don't have the 30, just give the best trinity often you have. Feel free to give it on Gillify. They are Greater ST, Greater St. Mark, Koji. They're on Gillify, Greater St. Mark, Church of God in Christ. A mail that donation in to Greater St. Mark, P.O. Box 19, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. And as I leave you now, my sisters and my brothers, my greatest desire and prayer to God for you is that you be saved, yes. that you be delivered, that you be healed, and that you be set free. And the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Yes. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. Until we see you again, until we meet again, God bless you. We love you. And shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's risen. Yes, hallelujah.